it's 9.30 in the evening or uh, hunting tonight hopefully I can find Aurora oh, I'll be waiting uh, 9.30 is the pickup time praying that I'm uh, gonna meet Aurora tonight this would be my last night and hopefully well, finger crossed I'm gonna see Aurora tonight look at the skies it's still cloudy but their part are not that cloudy so hopefully we'll see uh, Aurora tonight um, two things that you need to <clears throat> see Aurora it's a clear sky and dark sky so hopefully we meet this two criteria tonight this will be my Oh, he's a very nice guy and he knows all the jokes so <laughs> guys, but we have to be very kind with him because he in his strong arms have our life tonight so you know what to do okay beautiful people i'm happy to have you on board i'm happy that you're smiling as well and we can start we can start a tour Yay. from here but until that we will go through the darkness and Let's start from what do we need to see no lights tonight? Nice. Main things. How do you think? Clear sky. Okay, this is first. So um, we actually don't need fully clear sky. And in a, um, let's say, in our typical words that we usually uh, use for the, as we're going for no lights hunt, um, we say that we're looking for sky which is opening so it means that the clouds are moving a bit so it's possible from earth to see the stars any moment so yeah so one 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 is a is a clear sky seconds what do we need today luck luck yeah luck we always need you know in a life you need luck <laughs> what else solar flares exactly bingo 10 points for gryffindor Yay. Yay. Or the Slytherin. Yeah. Or okay. Let's say Slytherin then. Uh, so ten points for Slytherin. Uh, yes, exactly. We need we need solar flares. We need sun. Mm, third thing. What do we need? So we have clouds. We have or lack of clouds. We need sun and uh, third thing is it's something very obvious. <laughs> Not that obvious, but yeah. Clear sky. Clear sky. We have it already. Like we have, we we said it already, but. No, exactly, we need night, we need darkness. So three of those things we see, we need tonight. Darkness, um, because we could, we could, it would be possible to see northern lights during the day, but during the day there's no night, there's no uh, no darkness. Uh, so um, so we do need, um, no, we need darkness. And that's why also we have to get out of the Reykjavik of something which we call light pollution, because the street lamp are messing with our vision tonight so we are looking for the place okay so guys uh we need to go um outside of Reykjavik because we don't have not the darkness we don't have the um clear sky here um but i have to tell you that tonight we are going to be hunters do you want to play <laughs> We have to get back to our childhood when we've been a different kind of roles, you know, we've been magicians, we've been, um, you know, what, what you've been playing um, when, when you've been children. What? Power Rangers, maybe. Uh, yeah, so every, every one of us had, had their own um, different again so tonight we are getting back to our chat chat with, and we're going to be hunters <coughs> hunters but guys not real hunters the northern lights hunters which is vegan hunters so it's even yeah. better yay okay i have nothing to you know meat eaters and, and vegans i love them both so good yeah. um okay so we're going for the vegan hunt <laughs> northern lights hunt. Mm, which means um that the same as on a normal hunting, you have to be open for anything what, what is happening. You know, we have to be open that you know, wild 
something can kill you or I don't know, I'm just like I don't know what to do with the, the proper hunter, I never want to untouch anything. But I know what you have to do on Northern, uh, Northern Lights hunting. You have to be open for anything what is coming. So if we will find um, if we will find a place where the Northern Lights can come, but finally our clouds will, will come up and and cover cover the lights, we have to change the spot. So I have few different Mm, two different locations in my mind so if one place is not gonna be perfect then we'll be moving to another one another one are you with me guys yeah beautiful yeah, i love it mm, something what we also have to remember is that not lights are just like whales uh, like when you go for the whales watching or when you you know coming for the ice stand and didn't like not knowing what kind of weather it will be because it could be like minus 20, you know, and but you came anyway, so so not lights are the pure nature. We can turn them on, so it's also important for us all to remember. Okay. And there's also one thing that my my coworker like to like to say, and I'm just like um uh, I like to I like to take the, those words because I, I think that this is very much um important that if you think about northern lights that they look every time like the you know um, like on a postcards or on a facebook or instagram wall of the friends that you don't even speak anymore because you met in high school but you're not talking they don't look like this every time i have to tell you they might look they might look if we are very lucky but they might not look Northern Lights are a bit like, you know, the movie stars or fashion models, like they, they look beautifully on photos, you know, but in the real life, when you meet them on the streets, they are still human beings, you know, they're still just people. Sometimes they are without the makeup, so they look a bit differently. And the same with the Northern Lights, so they look great, brilliant, they're amazing on the photos, but with the naked eye, Maybe they are not giving such a, you know, stunning feeling. And I'm telling you why it's like this. So, in fact, cameras can show us much better vision of, of reality. Our eyes were not made to see northern lights. We have two types of cells in our eyes. We have rods and we have cones. So cones help us to see in the daylight situation in a, a in a situation when we have a plenty of lights around um, we can see details very well we can see colors very well but in the darkness which we're going to which we're going to 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 be um, just in a in a couple of minutes um, our eyes they don't work as well like um, as as in a in a daylight situation that's why northern lights sometimes look a bit grayish uh, or just just a bit greenish not fully green that's why we need our cameras that's why we need our iphones or any kind of phone um, with the camera uh, to uh, to catch the those lights so this is the little tip if you're going to see something in the sky because as we are team tonight i'm not um i might not see everything through the front window so i will also ask you to check the sides of the bus and if you will spot something even the grayish light something which is looking different than the clouds try to take a photo and see if it has a um, greenish glow it means that we have uh, we have not a light so this is this is our recipe for tonight so how northern lights can be um they usually usually come as the one line or couple of lines, a um, few lines in a like, in a sky. Um, sometimes they are moving, like shaking a bit, dancing. We we say um, they also come as as the fuses. But if we were very lucky, we might see them as crown. Crown. Um, my coworker like to say that crown is a, is like an explosion for me. Personally, it's more like a flower. It's more like a flower. So like a central part and the lines coming 
uh, out from from the central part. Okay. So the KP index for tonight is about two, one half two. Um, KP index is the um, is the scale which shows us the activity uh, of the of the sun. So it's it's not perfect, but it's not bad. We the only thing we, we need is is the uh, lack of lack of clouds and and luck. Hmm. in a night sky and um, so this is questionable because sometimes they uh, come and stay in, a, in a one place for a couple of minutes and sometimes even longer and they come in, a, in another place but uh, I can tell you that they will not be very quick like a shooting star they don't they don't come like this and so like you will see them in a one place then we'll look somewhere else and then get back uh, they, they're supposed to be uh, a bit a bit longer than this. Okay. Mm. One more thing about watching them. Uh, sometimes it's also very good to see them uh, with the corner of your eye, not like perfectly staring at them, but um, and when you just move your head a bit. Um, in the different angle you can watch them in a in a corner of the eye okay but what is the story of northern lights and who was the one who gave them the name aurora borealis because this is the the proper name we we call them because northern lights it is the um, it is the, the the good way of, of saying we can we can call them northern lights but sometimes it might for us be um, a bit um, confusing um, what, what exactly they are they are um, what exactly they are because um, for example germans they call them polar lichter which is very like a maybe easier to understand um, because not a light coming in the polar regions and a polar lichter so the lights in a in a polar uh, are like a is a better understanding than just the northern lights okay but aurora borealis <coughs> so in a, there was a italian astronomer uh, a man who was watching the the night sky and he was a pioneer in using telescope uh, and at his at his times um, so he, for example, um, he was observing the moon and he discovered the, uh, the mountains uh, in, a, in the moon, but he not time focused on the, uh, on the um, aurora. Uh, so it was in, a, in the year 1619 and uh, uh, the, the name of the, of the man, this Italian astronomer, was Galileo Galilei. And this man, um, he was watching the, the night sky and he decided to name this phenomenon, um, natural phenomenon, Aurora Borealis. So Aurora was the name of the goddess. It was the name of the mythology goddess who, um, who were bringing the colors to a new dawn. Uh, and her, um, she was bringing the new, the new dawn. Uh, her brother and sister was a sun and a moon. So she was racing in her rainbow chariots for the for the night sky um, bringing up the the colors that's why um, Galileo decided to name uh, this uh, this the, those lights uh, such a such a name poetic quite poetic and boreal on the other hand was the uh, the north wind so we have Aurora borealis we also have Aurora australis on the, on the southern part, so we can see from Australia or New Zealand, we can see them beautifully. But what Galileo thought about Northern Lights was not fully truth, because he, as he was seeing this, um, this phenomenon, he decided or he understood it uh, as the um, just reflection of the sun in our atmosphere. Um, but in fact, it is uh, it is more complicated than this. 
so thanks to our um, our science we can we can understand this situation a bit um, a bit more so as we said before everything starts from the sun um, in the sun in its core we do have two um, extremes one extreme is extreme pressure and we also have extreme heat uh, and we too we have uh, different kind of eruptions uh, in a in a core of uh, of the of the sun and those eruptions also comes up to the atmosphere of the sun which we call chromosphere so one type of the this eruption uh, is called solar flare it takes about seven to nine minutes for it to be seen um, in in the earth uh, and it's it goes like a flash of light like just um, just in the every every direction second type of, of this eruption we do have the coronal mass ejections um, so basically those are the particles uh, charged particles electrons and protons being hurled away to the cosmos um, and um, they travel like a wave through the cosmos and we call them solar wind so when they travel um, it takes them about two three days to get to the surface of the earth but they do not fall directly to our um, our um, surface of the of the earth there is something which protects us our like, invisible shield that protects us uh, from uh, from those radiation sun, sun radiation uh, which we call magnetic field so our magnetic field is trapping those um, those uh, particles and they do slide on the north uh, to the north and and south pole uh, where our atmosphere is the weakest and they uh, fall into uh, where magnetosphere is the weakest and then they fall into our atmosphere when and they collide with gases in our atmosphere and every such a collision with the, with the gas um, gave us the flash of light and they also have a different colors because every um, every gas uh, and uh, it depends of the of the altitude uh, is yeah, giving us also a different yeah a different color so most of those um, collisions happen between 100 300 um, kilometers above the surface of the earth uh, and over there uh, is the place where oxygen is mostly concentrated um, so such a collisions um, of the particles sun particles with with our uh, with our oxygen give us a color green which is also one of the best colors for us to see um, like with the with the with the eyes so it's very um, like the easiest to de detect um, the other uh, the other collisions happening uh, a bit further um, from 300 up to 400 uh, kilometers above the the surface and those collisions give us a color red so we have oxygen uh, also also over there um, a bit uh, lower uh, in about 90 kilometers above the surface of the earth and up to 100 uh, when um, those collisions happening with nitrogen we have color red or even pink and also um, with with helium when those collisions happen with helium we have color um, color purple or blue and then we also can have a mix of those colors so those are uh, the colors of aurora a good thing to say some general information about uh, about this country uh, so the land of iceland is uh, 103,000 um, square uh, kilometers mm, we do the population of, uh, of iceland is about 390 uh, thousand and what is um, important about um, our land uh, that um, most of our population live by the coast of the country uh, about two-thirds of the population in a capital uh, area so why do we have such a situation 
um, in the middle part of our country we have something which we call highlands and highlands are also a place where we have a neighborhood of the glaciers and volcanoes quite difficult uh, living conditions with a very extreme weather um, difficult access for the for the goods um, sometimes we have to just cross the river uh, like far with, a, with a car four by four uh, so for the winter we do close those um, those uh, roads mm, and that's why we do live uh, around uh, around those highlands on the on the coast so Iceland uh, lays on a mid Atlantic uh, ridge um, between two tectonic plates, North American and Euro-Asia. Um, what is also important that thanks to being in such a location called hotspot of, of the earth, uh, we have um, plenty of, of volcanoes with 130, 130 volcanoes all over the country. Um, the history of Iceland starts more or less uh, from the uh, from the 9th century. Um, before that, we also had some encounters, some uh, some people coming in here at the right time, the right date uh, of their coming. It's not um, it's not set for some 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 sometime between seven or eight century. Some of the Irish monks and uh, they've been coming and here living in the caves uh, but on official time when uh, um, Vikings started to come in here uh, was in the ninth century um, and I can tell you a story of one of uh, one of the most important Vikings uh, who came in here uh, Ingolfur Arnarsson was his name um, he was a uh, um, Norwegian Viking and he also committed a crime uh, in, a, in a Norway so he decided to run away from a monarch run away from the, from the country uh, and he heard, have heard about the land um, on, the, uh, on the ocean uh, that might not, nobody uh, have, have been there before and he decided to, um, to go there so he packed on his ship his family his belongings and also he took on his ship um, high, two high seat pillars what are the high seat pillars so the man was a pagan he was a believer on the north um, old nordic gods uh, like loki um, odin and uh, so he took um, two wooden blocks uh, they have been kind of sacred and they have uh, they had like uh, runes and uh, inscriptions uh, in a, on the surface so he took those pillar, pillars and when he was approaching the land of Iceland he decided to throw those pillars into the water uh, and then he started to pray he started to pray to the gods to find him the best place uh, to um, cycle down to, to build his new home, his new farm um, and then those pillars were washed away by the waves and he went on the east side um, of the country where he um, built his temporary uh, shelter. And at that time it was very typical to, for the wealthy Vikings to have their own slaves. So he decided to, uh, to ask two of his slaves to find those pillars somewhere by the coast. And they did uh, find those pillars where downtown Reykjavik is today. So it took them three years um, to move from east side to southwest uh, side of the country. And when Ingolfur was uh, approaching, uh, when he was getting uh, closer to the area of Reykjavik, he saw a bay and he also have seen uh, steam coming up from the ground here. Like we na right now um, around Reykjavik, we have this infrastructure, we don't see much of the steam. Uh, coming coming up but um, he have seen those uh, those clouds of steam and uh, in Icelandic smoke and steam are similar words so he decided to name this place Smoky Bay Smoky Bay Reykjavik so Ingolfur Arnason was in uh, fact our first settler of Reykjavik and one of the first settlers of Iceland 
And after that, Vikings have been coming here um, and in about 60 years from that, from that time, first parliament was born uh, in about 15, um, 15,000 Vikings came to, uh, to Iceland. We are going to stay here about 10-15 minutes, not, not more, as we already have plenty of buses, it's, uh, it's better for us to not stay here. We're going to find something different, but for now we're going to stop here for toilets. So if we need, uh, if we need the restrooms, uh, this is the time for us. Um, and uh, the, the restrooms are, you know, on the right side there is a building. Uh, it's it's a very nice, cozy place. So let's say five minutes after uh, after eleven, we'll see each other back in a in a bus, uh, and we'll be moving to another place. is full of tourists just to come here this area if we can find Aurora so right there there's some lights but not that good and this is the bus stop a good spot but we not stay long here and there's some lights over there 